Hello. In the next 10 minutes, I want to look at the following topic. I want to look at the notion of the folly of faith, or perhaps more precisely, how unquestioning belief makes you a friggin' moron. And I want to do this with two examples, with two ideas in mind. The first is I want to look at much of the hysteria surrounding the Apple company that all-pervasive manufacturer of fairly useless and somewhat trivial everyday items. I also want to take a look at the US election result and I want to look at what has happened to the US Republican Party and how the folly of faith and not observing what is happening as opposed to what you think is happening cost them an election. We're all familiar with items on the news such as this. A collection of somewhat rotund sad bastards collect overnight outside an Apple store, waiting desperately for it to open, so that they can grab the nearest piece of electronic equipment they can get with an Apple logo on it and rub it on themselves. Not surprisingly, this hysteria regarding Apple has permeated into the investment community and when I re was researching this little piece, I typed into Google the expression Apple stock recommendations. And not surprisingly, I got 663 million returns. Such is the level of interest regarding Apple and what it may or may not do and what it may or may not become. Unsurprisingly, the vast majority of these are positive and these are just a few that I've snipped out. This is an analyst proclaiming on October 16th that Apple was headed for $1,000 a share. This is dated from October the 9th and it talks about analysts standing by their recommendation of Apple despite its recent decline and we'll have a look at the decline in a moment in a very, very handy little exercise. Yahoo and others have gone about sampling the recommendations of analysts. This first table is taken from Yahoo and it, it's broken down into two sections. You can see across the top we have date. So reading from right to left, we have three months ago, two months ago, last month and current month. And you can see that the recommendations themselves are broken down into strong buy, buy, hold, underperform, sell. I've never actually known, despite having been a broker, what hold and underperformed meant. To me, trading is binary. You're either buying something or you're selling it. Likewise, I've never understood what strong buy meant. Does this mean we have to assume a certain pose when we buy a stock to be classified as a strong buyer? For the purposes of this exercise, I class strong buy and buy as being identical. To me, there is no difference. You are either a buyer of a stock or you're not. You cannot be a degree of buyer of a stock. You'll notice immediately that there is a remarkable consistency in our first two recommendations over the past few months. You can see they hold virtually constant. This is intriguing. In fact, it is fascinating in terms of how people fail to see what the data is actually telling them, how we get this form of cognitive dissonance, how we ignore something that we don't actually like. Nasdaq.com perform a similar service. They also, for all the stocks they trade, have a similar system of looking at and classifying recommendations. And I just snipped theirs for April as well. And you can see that their group of analysts uniformly believe that Apple is a strong buy. This is the reality of Apple over the past three months. We can see a peak at just above $700 and a current price around the mid 540 mark. Looking at this from a technical perspective, there is simply no compelling reason that Apple is a buy. 
none whatsoever. We can make a very compelling case for the opposite. We can see a repeated failure to take out a new high. We can see a gap down. We can see a consistency of lower highs and we can see robust volume during this period. So this is clearly not a stock that is roaring ahead at present. Now that does not mean that in some future time it might go to a thousand dollars, it might go to a hundred dollars, it might go to ten. The issue is nobody knows and you can only act upon what the data is telling you at any given point in time. So let's return to our timeline and have a look at these analysts recommendations in light of what's actually happening with price and remember price is the purest form of data we have nothing else is as pure everything else is opinion two months ago 85.7 percent of all analysts thought that Apple was a strong buy last month 87.5% thought it was a strong buy. This month, 89% of analysts think it is a strong buy. Really? The stock has lost $170 billion in value, but the more it declines, the more people think it is a buy. So therefore, by definition, Apple is at its most valuable to an analyst and it has infinite value to them when it is at zero. This is the idiocy of ignoring evidence in the form of price and being caught up in your beliefs. A similar thing occurred recently in the US election and the name I want you to to Google is Nate Silver. Nate Silver is an economist and statistician slash blogger who cut his teeth in the American pastime of baseball, that wonderful game which seems to go forever and nothing happens. Silver correctly predicted 49 of 50 states in the 2008 US general election. In 2012, he got 50 out of 50. The intriguing thing was, is that Silver began predicting a win for Obama several months out. He did this in the face of fierce criticism from right-wing conservatives, who criticised him on the basis of everything from his methodology to his background to his sexuality. What they could not deal with, much like analysts looking at something like Apple couldn't understand, is that he was looking at data. He was unmoved by personal opinion or personal bias. He was simply looking at data. What do the numbers say? So it's not belief. It's not interpretation. It is what do the numbers say? Your belief in anything is completely irrelevant. Your belief what a stock may or may not do is irrelevant in the extreme and is pointless in the extreme because your belief can in no way influence what is happening or what will happen. You need to trade what you see not what you think or want to see because in the end the only thing that matters is what price is doing.